Howdy, 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 and thank you for joining me tonight, folks. Uh, I know I've been uh, putting a lot more content out than normal lately, but there's just been so much going on, and uh, just got to keep on top of it, folks. If we don't, uh, we don't keep on top of what's going on, then we're going to fall behind on things very quickly. Um, before we get started here, we'll give it a minute or two. I know there were some other lives that were going on, and I want to make sure that we give people a chance to get in here real quick uh let's see here let's see who all's in here we had clearwater chad crushing on will cb becca jean kareen uh looks like we had some pretty good conversations going on before i got in here canadian girl howdy uh let's see uh jen nelson welcome back colonel brock all right stasha jehovah's witness apostate howdy destone hey, what's going on uh cindy pierre Catching your first live. Awesome. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, Jehovah's Witness uh, question. The Jehovah's Witnesses leadership just announced that men can have beards and women can wear pants to congregational meetings. And that's very interesting that they're uh, they're starting to change things up, isn't it? I mean, they were so, so strong on you have to follow things a certain way. You have to do it. A, you, have, you can't, vent, you know, get away from it. But now they're starting to break their own rules, aren't they? That's interesting. Uh, Sarasota Jerry, everybody say howdy to Sarasota Jerry. Got to finally meet up with Sarasota Jerry down there in Clearwater. Great guy, really, really good guy. Doctor Who Heather, howdy. Uh, let's see, Olson, Chitza, Helen CP, Mischief Managed. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Nasty, 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 nasty Nathaniel. Everybody say howdy to Nathaniel. Um, nasty, if you don't know who he is, he's a, I think he's without a doubt one of the top um, First Amendment auditors out there. He puts, uh, puts out some great content. Um, he's actually going to be joining me tomorrow night for a live and uh, really looking forward to it. Every time that Nasty's on here, we have some fantastic conversations. Sarah Bauman uh z fishman hello from wisconsin howdy how's the weather up there in wisconsin uh karen lee granny g t k k um <laughs> you've been waiting on your morning coffee huh uh let's see um th are you in uh are you in thailand is that where you're at uh let's see here connie pomerlo lynn garvey green-eyed lady what's up uh sarah bauman Cajun country travels. Yeah, that's the way we go. You go. Uh, you need to go out and catch me a, uh, a water moccasin or a, a, a pygmy rattlesnake. Get it up here to me. I've been wanting one. Araya Schlater. Uh, let's see. From Israel. Welcome. Welcome. I hope you are being safe. I uh, hope you guys are all set over there and that, uh, you know, there's, uh, <clears throat> you know, you keep yourself out of harm's way there. I know there's a lot going on. But, uh, you know, just make sure that you're, you make sure you're being safe. Uh, Lisa Robinson's in from Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see. Um, are the new board members of SP, SPTV volunteers, where are they paid? I don't know. I don't, um, I, I haven't gotten into that. I haven't uh, actually talked to Aaron about it. I haven't had a chance. We've been absolutely swamped with stuff going on. Uh, let's see. Sassy Lass. Oh, Kissed, 78 uh <laughs> transylvania that's awesome thank you so uh someone was asking earlier about the new emoji that i put up um and paula from boston hey uh let's see here uh let's see um yeah i don't know i will ask aaron uh once he gets you know half a second that he can actually um that he can actually take a second to talk. He's been so busy lately. It's not even funny, but I, I will ask, um, I would believe they're volunteering. Uh, let's see. Yeah. We've been having real bad winds up here as well down here. I'm sorry. Um, yes, absolutely. I'm going to put my, um, I'll make sure I type it out. Right. I'm putting my email address in here for you, Araya. Um, Array. I if I'm pronouncing it wrong, let me know. I, I have no problem being corrected on it, and I don't want to um offend you or um you know uh chop your name up. That's not cool. Lynn Garvey's back. 
Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Lynn says they are not paid. It's a nonprofit, so it's voluntary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Valerie Boljack's here. Incarnasol, what's up? Um, no, I I can't I can't devote time enough time to be an active board member. I wouldn't even attempt it. I I I think that having me on a board like that is more of a waste of of their time and their efforts. And I just I I wouldn't want to be on a board like that. Like I said, I can't. We have we have our own business that we run. I have the YouTube channel. We have so many things going on. I could not invest the time into it that it would need. And I think that for me to do that, that would actually be a, a, a waste when they could have people on there who could devote much more time to it. Um, I would be, I'd be honored if I was asked, but I would respectfully turn it down. And everybody look who's in the house. It's our old pal Clearwater Chad's here. Make sure you say howdy to Clearwater Chad. Um, so folks keep an eye on the chat tonight. If you see anybody trolling in here, I've been getting quite a few of them lately. Um, just make sure you put it in there and let me know. Um, my mods aren't here as of yet. If they do get in, then, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be on top of things. But, uh, you know, with this not being one of my normal nights that I'm going to be streaming, there's a very good chance they're not going to be here. So, and that that's on me. So, uh, in my opinion, I think the new board members are all great choices except for one. Um, I think they're all great choices. I think that they, uh, you know, there's a really good cross section of folks who are in that. And, um, I, I personally, I think they're all great, uh, loser. What's up? Uh, make sure we're not missing anybody. Uh, miss Mia. How are you doing? And, oh, Anaphylaxis is here. Um, okay. Uh, shoot me an email, Anna. I'll, uh, I'll get you, you know, we'll, uh, we'll start working on getting you in there. Uh, Xander Beaverhouse. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. Hey, Po, any plans to do one AI auditing with Nasty Nathaniel? If I get the chance, I am certainly, you know, one, I'm one of the plans that I have is to make it out to LA. So I definitely got to meet up with our homeboy, uh, Nasty. He, he's a great guy. He does some great stuff. And I would, I'd be honored to be able to go out and, you know, do some First Amendment auditing with Nasty down there, in, out there in California. I shouldn't say down there. So, hey, folks, uh, how you like the uh, new sign behind me here? Uh, just finished it up about an hour ago. So my luck, it'll probably fall apart uh, because uh, I didn't give the glue enough time. Mandy Gonzalez is here. All right. Looks like we caught up with everybody. People were asking about the uh, the new emoji that I had, and they were trying to figure out what it was. And that emoji is actually this picture here. And this was my my last ride truck that I had. Um, it was a 1998 GMC. It was actually a Suburban that I had. Uh, I cropped the back off of it and put the uh, you know opened it up like a like a pickup truck. It actually gave me more room than a standard pickup truck that way. And uh, you know served me well. We did a lot of uh, charitable events with it and things like that. Um, Uh, let's see. Well, you know, I, I've been talking with a few people about that, Michael. And one of the things we've been talking about is training, some kind of training that we could put out there for law enforcement officers. That would be a free, uh, possibly an online kind of course where they could come in, they could view it. One of the big problems you have is being able to get it certified state by state by state because every state has their own rules on when it pertains to, as it pertains to training for law enforcement officer they have their own ways of you know putting putting it all together i've i've had uh, at least three different courses here in the state of michigan that i personally wrote out and were certified by the state of michigan for uh, being used to train law enforcement officers so i'm pretty familiar with how it works with michigan but you know it's the other states um Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I would. You know, plus, Michael, one of the things you have to think about is the fact that law enforcement, for the most part, you're not going to run into Scientology. You're not going to run into the cults. Most I went years within my the first department I was with and never once ran into anything like that. The only thing that we even came back, came in contact was, was Jehovah's Witnesses. And every once in a while we would see 
um, those from the uh, the Mormon church who were, you know, the guys riding the bicycles and things like that. But that was the closest we saw with it. A lot of lot of departments will never see anything from from any of these cults. Uh, but I do agree. It's, it's good that they get some kind of training out there for them and that we go after, you know, we try to get it out there for free so that they can uh, get things taken care of. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I made both of those guitars there, uh, Cajun Country. Um, the one, this one, of course, I'm trying to figure out where I'm at here. This one is a Telecaster body that I made, and it's literally layers of, um, of plywood that were cut on the, the laser. And let me get out of the way. This big boy right here is a, um, a it's it's a copy of a Gibson Explorer that I, that I made, and all of it was cut on the laser, and they were engraved with the laser as well. And so, some folks had asked about. Someone had asked me if they had any if I had any video of my of the monster trucks. So. I'm going to show you this real quick one here. This was the truck before I cut off the back um, roof section there and turned it into a pickup truck. But this was at a bog not too far from the house here. If you don't know what a bog is, it's a mud bog. And this was back in 2012. And this will give you an idea about the size of the truck in comparison. You see the guy standing over here. Uh, you see a regular pickup here and a one over on the other side. That'll give you an but. This was my big old stuff back then. And we took it out to the bogs just to go have some fun with it. And yeah, it was, uh, I spent the next probably two weeks trying to get that mud out there. So there wasn't anything they had there that could stop that truck. That thing was, that thing shoot through every bit of that mud bog. I once that we actually got into a pulling competition with that bulldozer over there. And we were one of the around on the other so it was a lot of fun had uh, had a good time doing it but that's uh that was that was it let's see um no nasty i've never come across quicksand in michigan but i know that they they do have it uh there are there are some places where um you know out by the sand dunes and things like that uh let's see here feral cheryl and just say if you didn't get a chance get over and check out feral cheryl's channel cheryl make you make sure you put your uh link in there so everybody knows um let's see uh so they all know and uh, make sure you say howdy to uh steamboat cheryl there um you know she really she enjoys her watching her her british television shows and stuff like that but uh no toys, nothing like that. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm just a big kid at heart. I'm the one who actually does a lot of the, the uh, uh, let's see, that's a standard exp explorer in Carnesol. All right. So let's talk about what's going on, why I came on tonight and why I'm talking about what's going on. It seems the more that I talk about a certain person and the things that have happened with them, I am getting more and more and more phone calls, emails, messages on Facebook, all different kinds of things going on. People wanting that, basically telling me that I need to do this. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I got a whole lot of people that have decided that they're going to try to handle me. And <clears throat> The, the problem is, is that these folks don't honestly, they, they don't know me. The people that know me, they're not even trying that stuff because I don't play that game. I am not the kind of person that if I dig my heels in, you're not going to stop me. All right. My wife will tell you, I got a big old blockhead. And when I dig my heels in, ain't no plan. Uh, let's see. Uh, Granny G, um, I have the AP laser. Um, it is a hundred, 130 watt CO2 CNC laser. Um, I'll see if I can pull a picture of it up. I had a, had a real nice picture of my son standing next to it. That big, big old Lubbock said he is at six foot six, 325 pounds, man, that's a big boy. But, um, so the, the problem is, is that more and more and more, this is happening. I am getting, I have people that are contacting me constantly trying to 
as I said, it's it's nothing more than what appears to be an attempt to handle me. They want to shut me up. They're, I'm getting, you know, you need to remember what what he has done in the fight against Scientology. You need to you need to think about a lot of things before you decide you're going to start going live and saying these things. Well, in all honesty, that's just not going to happen. All right, you, I I have said it. I have made no bones about it. I think that he has done some tremendous things in the fight against Scientology. And like I said, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Leah, Mike, and Aaron. Because the simple fact is, is that these, um, you know, these folks were, the, were my first step into the, uh, into the world of Scientology, other than what I had seen as a child. And uh, Granny, here's what it looked like when I first set it up. Uh, it will cut uh, 40 inches by 24 inches. It's a uh, it's a pretty pretty good machine. It works really good for me. Um, Highland Lassie, hi from Scotland. Glad I caught a, a live. Law enforcement so different from uh, we encounter. Love uh, being ed love being educated. All right, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Uh, man, it's been so long since I've been to Scotland. My goodness. Um, Diana, um, can you go a little bit more into what that is? Uh, you're confused, watch a lot, have no idea what, what's being talked about. Um, let's see, loser, I'm so incredibly grateful that you continue to discuss the mistakes of an individual. You know, the thing is, is I said it last night, I've said it before, if this person would simply stop, you know, there, if, in any way they want to get any kind of credibility back, one of the ways that you do it is you have an honest discussion with Miriam. And if Miriam says, we had to talk and uh, I'm, you know, I think that we've come to an even ground, then I, that's the thing. That's the, uh, that's the way it is. I, I, you know, I'll go by what she says, but until that happens, and I'm not asking for it to be made public. I'm not asking for it to be out there, put out in a live stream, do one of those interviews like that. What I am asking for is simply own up to what you've done, have an open and honest communication, get things laid out, start moving forward, accept the fact that this cult has messed you up and that you're no longer in that cult and you have to be acting like a regular person out here you can no longer use the the mentality that came from Scientology or from OSA or whatever it was that you were called and that's the thing you know d own up to what you've done apologize start moving forward it's like the story i was telling last night a friend of mine his wife she started developing mental issues and she actually got, had to be, uh, they had to put her into the hospital when she came out and I was talking with her about it. And she's discussing how angry she is because she felt that she was helping the other patients and they wouldn't allow her to do it. Hun, what you need to do is you need to fix yourself first before you start deciding that you're going to try to help other people. And that's how I feel with this. There are a lot of people that are coming out that have, have major issues until they openly and honestly understand that they need to get themselves fixed first. How can they help anyone else? And that that's an issue that I have with it. Uh, uh, Solana fan. Okay, I'm not even trying. I'm gonna I'm gonna chew that up so bad, and I don't want to insult you. Totally entitled to speak your mind. You don't need to make any apologies for it. Oh, you know, look, if I insult someone, I will definitely um, apologize for that. I don't mean to insult in an, anyone. All right, but the fact is, is calling someone out is a whole lot different than insulting them. If you tell them that they need help, that they need to acknowledge that there is a need for help and they continue to refuse to get that help and get themselves straight, yeah, then there's going to be a problem with that. Uh, let's see, because uh, you're talking Mike Render. Oh, heck no. They have no right to tell you what to say. Apparently, there's a lot of people that think that they do. And we have to remember that it's coming in at a three-point attack, okay? So you've got Scientology, 
you have those who are supporting the person who is the, you know, is the focus of things. And then you have SPTV. So you've got three points there that are all converging. The problem is, is that you got two of those points are fighting against one. And that's why we needed Aaron to get started with the SPTV Foundation. And folks, if you are in a cult, if you are in an organization and you feel trapped and you need a way out, go into the description of this, of this video. Down in there, there is a link to several organizations, starting off with SPTV Foundation, and then there are several more. And all you got to do is go through there. You're going to find the one, find one that hopefully will help you. And thank, big thank you to Mona Englert because she's the one who gave me that list. And I was so thankful. Like I said, I have, it, I have so many things going on. Sometimes I can't even tell what my own name is. Uh, Lizeka, where are these people coming from? Who other than the Aftermath board are defending these people? These are folks who are form a lot of them are former Scientologists. A lot of them are people who watch on the uh, the YouTube channels. They watch the SPTV channels and things like that. You would not believe the kind of emails that I'm getting. You know, and I get the the typically they start off. I want to say I have a lot of respect for you, and I think that you're doing a great job. But you need to consider what you're doing and the damage it's doing to the SPTV community. Um, I'm not the one who's causing the damage. All right. The fact is, is that you have other people that are out there that are refusing to accept the fact that they are insulting, hurting, and they're refusing to give help to people that need it. And they're refusing to take accountability for what they what they have done, what they have said, how they have handled things. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Uh, Valerie Boljack, a cult education for law enforcement. The easiest way to write a guidance on cult behaviors, how to identify and how to handle criminal behavior versus freedom of religion beliefs. Then the department can devise training from there. Well, like I, like I was saying, one of the big problems that you have is, is a lot of departments will not take the training if it's not certified within their state. Because it's basically the way that they look at it. A lot of departments look at the training and if it's not certified, it therefore doesn't, it doesn't hold any weight. So the, if you go into court and they say, well, you, where did you learn about this? Where did you learn how to take care of this from? Well, I watched this video from this uh, group called SPTV Foundation. And this video had a lot of really good information in it. Well, was it certified? What do you mean? Was it certified? Was it cleared by your state? And has a certification for it that says that you are trained and that the state accepts it. Then those things can cause, that can cause real problems. You want to make sure you cover all your bases on something like that. Dustin Soda Fountain. And if you didn't see Dustin and uh, Steamboat Cheryl were just out there in Clearwater. They were out doing uh, audits around flag and the Fort Harrison. Make sure you get over and check their channels out. Dustin, throw your link in there for everybody. Uh, let's see. Um, Diana, it's in all honesty, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be, but keeps popping up, keeps say, saying things. And a lot of us are very insulted by the things that are going on with what's being said. And a lot of us feel that there are some serious issues that need to be dealt with and they're not. And we got two new members of the channel. We got the not so graceful Swan and Makmir Doshigal has, uh, is a new uh, member of the channel there. Thank you both for becoming part of the family. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Dustin was many streets at the flag tonight. Uh, let's see. I just saw one from Anaphylaxis. Um, Paula, it is troublesome that people are trying to handle you. I wonder what other channels are being pressured. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit here as well. It's not just me. I'm, I'm taking a lot of flack because recently... As you've seen, my my channel has grown incredibly over the last few months. I've I've picked up near over four thousand new subscribers to my channel. My videos are starting to pick uh, get a lot of views, and they're getting a whole lot of views from people within the SPTV community. So, and please, I, I in no way consider myself big or anything like that. There are crap tons of channels out there that have way more subscribers than I do. I just, you know, that's just one of the things is, is people are saying, Hey, you're, you're starting to become a bigger name in this. And that's, that's something I hear quite a bit. 
Um, anaphylaxis is clear to me. Mike Render's way of thinking about things is still rooted in, in cult. Yeah, I, I believe it. I, I I concur with that. Loser 1121. There is no question that he needs not only to apologize, but he truly needs to get help with their own. And that, yep, that's exactly what I was saying. Stooky six. Uh, keep speaking truth and justice. Certain people need to stop trying to silence people. Absolutely. And that's what we're finding out. Uh, let's see. Found out yesterday who Aftermath Foundation was giving money to prior to not giving it to Miriam. It's been bad choices for a while. I've just completely, I'm not even paying attention to what's going on with them anymore. Stasha, man, I love that picture. I truly don't think any of them will survive therapy. There is so much baggage they need to unload that I worry how it will affect them. You know, I'm not a, um, I, I'm, I'm not a, uh, you know, a professional. I'm not a, a, someone who, you know, I haven't been trained in any kind of counseling or anything like that. Lord knows we've, i I like all people, we all got our own issues. Um, but you know, a trained professional would, hopefully they would be able to walk them through it. I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to happen quickly. I think it's going to take time. And just like any kind of counseling, any kind of psychiatric help, it's a matter of time getting through things. Uh, Lizeka, we all like Poe better because he knows how to act right. I at least try to. I'm a dummy, and I'm not going to lie. I do stupid stuff. Uh, let's see. Nasty Nathaniel, uh, I truly believe that Render and others in the ex-Scientology community still have that mentality in them, absolutely. Even though they've been out for years, their minds are still in it. And, you know, that... And I agree with that because absolutely, because what they are doing is they're falling back. It appears they're falling back on old tactics, old uh, mindsets. No. So they can use it to develop their own training for certification. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, that, you know, the, the, the problem with that is here in Michigan, the departments themselves can't take, you know, someone else's training and get it certified. They have to go through the people who wrote it. Are the ones who have to get it certified and that's the way it works in 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 a lot of states that i've dealt with is that if you're going to get something certified as training you have to get it certified by the person or the agency that actually wrote it uh crafting with emily just became a member thank you so very much uh let's see here diana johnson speak your truth poe i'm trying i am really trying and i'm gonna let you all know right now i'm probably gonna get I'm probably going to get pretty worked up here in a little bit here. I'm trying to take it easy, work my way into it before I get there. Uh, Claudia and M, uh, after a while, when someone keeps tearing people down, I can I no longer can hear about all good things he does. And, and that's how a lot of people feel about this. Uh, loser, you have no responsibility to the damage. In addition, you have repeatedly admitted, mentioned that just because this occurring doesn't hurt the community. Um, if you're talking about what they've been doing, uh, and that's a, absolutely, that's one of the things I've tried to build this channel on is the fact that we should all be able to have open discourse. We should have open debate. We should be able to, uh, have a, an educated discussion on things. And if you're not sure of something and you're discussing it, you know, work it out together, but we need to have it in a peaceful and a way, a peaceful way that we can all be, you know, we're not here to tear each other apart. We're here to build up this community and tear down Scientology. Uh, Ishka Bibble, Leah is too blindly loyal and she can't see the forest for the trees when it comes to Mike Grinner's uh, chicanery and eroding credibility. She could be clued in. Why well, I, I don't have any contact with her. I don't know how to actually, um, you know, to get hold of her. But, you know, Leah is who Leah is. Leah is a very strong-willed person, and she's one of those that she doesn't give up her loyalties easily. And you got to you gotta respect that. Uh, your voice is so important. Please don't allow yourself to be silenced. Oh, it's not happening. It is not happening. Um, Lasty Nathaniel, I think there's a lot of jealousy in the ex-Scientology community. I, you know, I see some of those things. Um, it's, it, it's, it's really interesting. There, there seems like there are some folks who are very jealous over the fact that one person is light years ahead, the, ahead of the rest of us when it comes to the amount of people that are watching them, the amount of views that they're getting for their channel. So I, I completely agree with that, Nasty. Seriously, the whole thing is turning into exclusive channels, inclusive channels versus exclusive. Could possibly be. I've talked about the fact of 
you have certain channels that instead of dealing with what is going on now, keep going to the past. Now there are certain, there are certain ones peeling the onion, our Scientology story with um, Mark and Janice. Now they, I mean, you talk about bringing up some real history and stuff like that, but they're not sitting there. You know, I've said it how many times I'm tired of hearing about Tommy. I'm tired of hearing about John. I'm tired of hearing about, you know, all these celebrities and crap like that, unless it's something current that's going on now that has some kind of importance on what we're seeing and doing. It doesn't mean anything to me. And I'm tired of hearing about them. Yeah. How many times do I got to hear that someone forgot to salute uh, Tom and the Keebler King and they turned around and got put into the RPF? Okay. We've heard about that. Yes. It's a horrible thing. Yes, it shouldn't have happened. But the fact is, is that you keep you keep beating it, you keep beating it to death, and it needs to stop. Mike Rainer still applies Scientology. He just hates David Miscavige and isn't allowed in the buildings. <laughs> That's a pretty good statement there. Um, let's see, Stuart Pauly, Leah's building is busy suing DM for def defamation and conspiracy. Yeah, I just saw something today. I got to get over there and watch Aaron's uh, new video he just put out about that. Uh, it seems that, uh, and Quacks 1978, it seems that if he isn't, if he isn't one speaking that he doesn't want to hear it. And there are people like that, that if they can't, if they're not the ones who get to rule the conversation, they don't want to be part of it. So Mandy Gonzalez. And, uh, again, folks as, Oh boy, I got it. Oh, it's strapped in there. Okay. Mandy makes, if you see under the bottom of the Explorer there, uh, that was an ornament that Mandy Gonzalez made and she makes them by hand. I got it off finally. Uh, she does a fantastic job with these. They're beautiful. They're handmade, and they're just quality items. I keep it right here on my my micro, microphone uh, arm. Uh, telling the truth isn't drama. Is Danny Masterson sitting in jail because of drama, or because of truth and facts? I, I like that. That's a good statement. I think accountability would go a long way for people. I said it last night. If Mike would just simply own up and do what he's supposed to, sit down, apologize to Miriam have an open discussion like Mike Brown did. All right. When Mike said, when Mike had the two interviews with Laura FM, the, the thing is, is that he, like I said last night, I gained so much respect for Mike Brown from those two uh, individual incidents where they sat and they spoke, not just Mike, but I, I so much respect for Laura FM because you see how strong she is. And she literally, she wasn't backing down on things. She let things out. They both they both understood. They both came to an understanding. And I think they're both better people for it. And both of them got a huge amount of respect for me. Therapy requires not just time, but also yeah, a willingness to accept and change. I speak as someone with a degree in communication and a recovered addict. I, I That is awesome. I am so happy for you that you were able to overcome that. Um, Nisa, if you have mental illness, don't join Scientology. Yeah, well, we know how they feel about it. It's not good for your mental health. If you want to get in anyway, don't because you'll get long-term effects. Yeah, well, we're seeing those kinds of effects. Uh, <laughs> don't burn those biscuits. Yeah, I, I actually sent a, a design over for Marilyn. I, I don't know if she's going to use it or not, but I, I did a design for her. Uh, don't burn my biscuits. Uh, peop, uh, Green Eyed Lady, people are subscribing to you because you have integrity, integrity, you are honest, you make sense, and have great moral compass. Well, thank you. And I'll tell you right now, I think that that moral compass comes from being a father. Um, like I said, I don't like using profanity, and especially not on here. And I'm not worried about the fact that I could get demonetized because of the use of profanity, I know there's time time limits and all that that break it up. But when when I'm talking, one of the things that I, I think about, is this something I would say in front of my mother, my wife, or my children? And that's very important to me because I do not want to come out and be saying things that I would not openly say in front of either of those, any of those people. You know, those are the most important people in my life. And if I'm not willing to say it in front of them, I'm not saying it in front of other people too, because the rest of you all are brothers, sisters, fathers, daughters, grandmothers. And who am I to be saying insulting things like that? Mischief Manage, gift of membership. If you were the lucky recipient of that gifted membership, make sure you tell uh, Mischief Manage, thank you for that. Uh, let's see here. I'm getting back up. I know I get so far behind the daggone chat because I can't shut up. Um, 
you know, what's funny is my wife, my wife was oftentimes, you just sit there and don't speak. Well, you know, put a microphone in front of me. I'll sure talk your head off. Uh, question. Will you keep asking, uh, asking to, um, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in having him on. I'm not interested in having him on anymore. If he emailed me and said, Hey, you know what? Let's talk about this. I saw what you had to say about my interview. Why don't we, you know, I, I would be interested in it, but he has to know going into it. Number one, I'm not going to insult him. I'm not going to do leading or gotcha questions, but I'm not going to go easy. I'm going to ask the truth and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be frank and honest about things. Uh, you know, you all expect some kind of integrity and honor from me, a moral code. And that's how I'll handle it. If Mike Render said, Hey, I'll come on, let's do a, a live interview. Will I would welcome him in, but he's going to come in under the same rules. I'm not going to hold back on the questions. I'm going to ask you the hard questions. I am going to hold you. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire and make you answer my questions. And we're going to come to some kind of conclusion on it. But, you know, I doubt either one of them will do that. Lori and Joja. <clears throat> there are so many awesome contributors. I don't have time or incl inclination to deal with the less positive con contributors. I'm even starting to ignore those responses to, yeah, there's a lot of people, you know, and like I said, I wouldn't be doing them if he, um, if he just stop, but you got to open your mouth. You got to say something. And then I get, I get pretty upset about it and I'm going to say something about it. Uh, Megan Johnston, do you think it's a coincidence that three cars got three nails? In it? Yeah, I was talking about that uh, the other night. Um, you have Lori Plays, who was on last night with me. Fantastic conversation. Two retired cops just sitting here, just BSing a straight way through it. It was a great conversation. She got a nail in her tire. I believe someone in the, Was in the uh, Washington, D.C. area got a nail in their tire. And then someone out in California got a nail in their tire. And my thing is, you know, that's the, I, I've been one of those who subscribed for a long time because I had older detectives that were training me and they all said the same thing. There's no such thing as coincidence. And I don't believe it's coincidence either. And I'm going to get into some of these things that are going on, um, with that stuff as well. Oh, hell no. Thank Welcome. Thank you for being back. Uh, let me get on down here make sure I'm not missing anything. I don't want to, uh, Oh, I made it to the bottom. Okay. And Carnosol, Scientology is designed to make everyone except David Miscavige and the very newest to be both victim and victimizers. Very few dodge being both. It's part of trying to establish a lifelong trap for people. And that's a good statement. I like that. Uh, let's see here. Doc, howdy. Uh, it's okay. Oh, did you change up your, uh, your profile pic there? The, you know, if you got the fur babies in there. Uh, green Aid Lady, my profanity escalated when I lived and drove in Houston. Yeah, try driving around here when they have every single highway under construction at the same time. Whoever is doing this in Michigan really needs to get their head examined. You're going to shut down every single highway, knock it down to one lane that goes into and out of Detroit? Come on now. Uh, ridiculous. Um, let's see. Sandy Lee. Uh, I watch SPTV people. They are current. I don't care if Tom is doing anything at, uh, at all. The point of this is children, elders, and the fraud. Absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, Jess checks out. Question. Wait, hold on. Can you please explain what's going on? I'm in Germany, and it's the middle of the night here. Last I saw on social media was Diddy and the bridge like five hours ago. Um, I'm... <sighs> What's going on is there has been pretty much a concerted effort from a lot from a few different people to try to get me to back off on the videos I've been doing where I'm calling out Mike Render on his interviews, his blog that he put out. And, uh, you know, I, when this first started happening like that, I got in touch with Marilyn Honig. And I'm sure each and every one of you know who Marilyn is. Coffee, Colts, and Craft with Marilyn Honig. Her husband's Dustin Honig. They are amazing people. Most people call her Mama Bear. Her her catchphrase is "Don't burn my biscuits." So the the thing is is that I I contacted her and I said, "Hey, I'm getting these calls. What is going on with us?" She's like, "Oh my gosh, you're being. They're trying to handle you." And you know, having never been in Scientology, never been in a cult, I don't know. You know, some of the terminology with it. I try to keep on top of it. But my goodness, it's it's got to be a book about that thick, just a terminology. 
And we talked about it. Now I've become very familiar with the term handling because that is what seems to be happening. You know, I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting uh, emails. I'm getting instant messages, Facebook messages, those kinds of things. People, uh, you know, and they always start off, like I said earlier, they start off the same way. I have a lot of respect for you. I love your channel. I love the work that you're doing. But I think that you need to really start thinking about these things that you're saying and what you're doing and you're calling calling Mike out on these things. And I honestly, you know, and then it all almost always turns into we're supposed to be focusing on Scientology, not on each other. And this infighting isn't helping. Well, I wouldn't be speaking, like I said, if people weren't doing crap like that. So I'm not, you know, if if you don't know me, you've never been to my channel, I do not back down. If it's a right cause, I'm going to keep the fight up. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start talking about, some of you have heard some of these things before, but we'll, I'm going to go over it. Um, the things that have been done to me since my channel started getting bigger. It started off with uh, my wife owns a courier service, and a lot of times I would help out and I would do, I would do the uh, the driving, you know, handle one of the routes that she has. And that particular route takes me about forty five minutes south into the state of Ohio into Toledo, Ohio. We would do the uh, you go around. We have veterinary clinics that we were working with, and we would go and pick up samples from the veterinary clinics, and then drive them to a lab about. 20 minutes north of Detroit. So it's about an hour drive from that last stop in Toledo to the lab. And being a retired police officer, one of the things is I'm always situationally aware. And that's what we call it, situational awareness. Not the SA that we've been talking about in other things that have happened. All right. And so I, I that's why I just literally, I just say situational awareness instead of SA because I don't want people getting confused on that. And so as I'm driving, I started noticing there was a little gray, uh, I believe it was a Honda Civic that was being, that I was noticing that I would see near my house here in Southeastern Michigan. And then I would see it down in Toledo, but I would see it at different locations around where I would be stopping and checking things out, where I'd be stopping and grabbing samples to take back up to the lab. And I thought, you know, that was kind of odd. So I started paying more attention to it. And I noticed that it had, didn't have a Michigan plate on it. It had a plate from another state. And so one day when I see it, I, I intentionally slowed down, let it get past me as we were coming up to a red light. And I saw the stickers in the windshield indicating this was a rental vehicle. And I got a look at the driver, even though when they, when the vehicle pulled past me, the driver made sure to turn their head like that. I was able, you know, there's mirrors, everything else. You could see it. And I could see them behind me when they were following me. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty aware of what's going on at this point. And it was probably a week or two later that, um, you know, and these people didn't realize I have a neighbor who lives a few houses down for me. That is, was the vice president of probably the most notorious motorcycle club in Michigan. And he called me up and says, Hey, there's some dude sitting in a car with a camera with a great big lens on it. He's taking taking photographs of your house and your family. He goes and literally says, you want me to call some of my boys down here and we'll tune him up? And I go, no, 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 no. Um, behind my property is a metro park. So I can, you know, there'll never be anyone behind me because that metro park's there. So I said, hey, if I come down and I jump, I jump the fence and I come through the metro park, is it okay if I come down and go through your backyard and we can just walk out front and, and have a talk with this person? So we'll go out there, do that. We meet up with a guy, find out he is a private investigator, and then we find out who he's with. And we know that there's a link to Scientology with that particular organization who are basically third party hiring him. Okay. He got the point. Ain't been back. All right. There was another one not too long, uh, probably a month or two after that, that was the way it is, is I, I live at the base of a T. Okay. So my house is right here, right here. Okay. Literally the other street, if you don't stop, you're going to drive right up my driveway. So up this street, now this guy was down here. He was down here at the neighbor's house, taking the pictures. Now I find out from another neighbor that there's a guy up that street who is 
doing the same thing, taking photographs. So go down there with my friend, go down there with a neighbor. And this guy's, he's, he's a tough guy. I mean, he, he don't play. He's, uh, he's just not somebody you want to mess around with. So we go out there, we have a talk with him. Same organization is hiring him as well. Hasn't come back. Then there were four instances. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I can't, I don't live in Walter White's house. <laughs> Pizza on the roof. That'd be interesting. But, um, I noticed people, uh, Roscoe would go crazy. And I would notice there were people out there at my mailbox looking at my mailbox. And finally I actually caught one of them in the process. And every time they would run off this time, they ran off as well, but I haven't had them back since then. Not too long after that, I suddenly started getting calls from my former employers. The 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 police department that I had uh, that I uh, retired from finally as chief of police, the um, Detroit Police Department, and uh, the city of River Rouge, where I had first retired from. <clears throat> Someone was emailing them, and they were asking for freedom of information. They were putting in freedom of information requests, and they were wanting a complete history of my employment with those departments. Well, apparently they didn't realize under FOIA, there's a lot of things that you can't, you can't FOIA about police officers. This person was asking for medical records. They were asking for all my personal information, things like that. It's just like with a crime report. If you come in and you try to get a police report from us, we're going to redact information from it. So those were the things that were going on to this point. And so when Chad and I got to Clearwater, I, it was, you know, and I talked to several people. I talked to Aaron. I talked to uh, Jeffrey Augustine. I talked to a lot of people who've had to deal with these things. And when I, when I was talking to them, I said, I don't understand. Why are they doing this to me? And Jeffrey Augustine, I think, said it the best when he, he said, look, you're a, not only a retired police officer, you're a retired chief of police. You have incredible history, especially with human trafficking and things like that. And you're working with Aaron Smith Levin. That's what they're, they're thinking. That's what brought me into the, uh, um, into the attention of it. And Kareen, yes, now we do have, uh, we do have surveillance things going on. And of course, the minute you put that stuff up is the minute that all I get are, uh, pictures of possums and deer in my backyard. But, you know, at some point they're going to slip up. I'm going to get them. Um, I've actually got one that's on the tree closest to the mailbox. So they want to go into my mailbox again, go right ahead. You know, um, you know, and the first guy that I spoke to, I said, you know, I had noticed that when I would take the trash can out on garbage day, I would, I, man, this trash can's awful light. It was full last night. Open it up. The trash can was empty. So I asked him, I said, Hey, you enjoy what, uh, those things in the trash and uh, it was all dog poop. Yeah. Now, yeah, because we don't put any personal stuff into our trash. Uh, Mr. Manage, thank you for that super chat. Um, Aftermath Foundation changed from helping people to escape to bringing down COS. Funny how that seemed to happen right after November. Love you in this community. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, that's that's another thing that um, we're going to be discussing is about the transition from, you know, we're here to help people to now we're fighting Scientology. Um, you know, leave the fight to, of Scientology, to, with, with Scientology to the SPTV community and the folks that are out there doing the First Amendment auditing and the, the peaceful protesting. Leave that to them. If your foundation is based on the fact that you're supposed to be helping people who are coming out who need financial aid, they need some kind of support system, then you should be focusing on that. And it shouldn't be a matter of you know, fighting the organization. You do that on your own personal thing, but as an organization, you make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to. Oh, uh, let's see. Nasty Nathaniel. I wonder if there are any Scientology PIs parked on my street right now. Probably. They're probably waiting for you to get the margaritas out. That's what they're doing. Uh, comment, uh, just checks in. Thank you so much for the explanation. Miss a lot in a different time zone and toddler mom. Hey, believe me, I know how it was. Oh my gosh. We had, we had twins and we had them as toddlers, you know, the toddlers at the same time. We have one on the spectrum and one who's not on the spectrum. So completely different, you know, they're, they're going to be completely different children to begin with, but my goodness, they were night and day different. My daughter, like me, bonehead does stupid stuff. She was the one always getting hurt and always doing stuff to get herself hurt. So yeah, 
Uh, I'm so glad you have cameras and you're not missing all the cute critters anymore. I absolutely love our possums. And after I talked to the wife, you know, the wife's like, that's a scary, ugly looking thing. And I'm like, look, this is what it does. You know, you don't hurt a possum. So now, you know, she's in love with possums just like I am. I, I think, yeah, possums are ugly. They're ugly pretty. That's how I think about it. And they're cool. Absolutely cool. You can run up on them. They'll act like they're playing dead. Grab, pick them up by the tail. Move them where you need to. But don't hurt a possum. Uh, let's see. Nina Canadian. Howdy, 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 howdy. Uh, stop by and say hello. Appreciate the bunch of you here. Yes, I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Last night with Lori, my nose was itching so bad. Uh, I think Roscoe's doing some kind of shedding thing, man. It's everywhere. And he's got little, little hair, so it, you don't see it. And I'm, ooh, driving me nuts. But uh, so when Chad and I got to Clearwater, we weren't even thinking about, you know, is Scientology going to be coming after us? They've got a whole crew of people that are doing the anti-Scientology stuff right there in Clearwater. We're just two people that got into the middle of it. And the the crazy thing was, is the night that we, the first night that we were there, that was the night we went to the 113th birthday celebration, stood out there with Lori Plays and Steamboat Cheryl. And there were a few other people that were there. I think uh, Sarasota Jerry was there with us. And so as we were leaving, uh, the the thing is, is we get to the car. First thing we do is, of course, we go around and we check. Yeah, I feel like I got the hair all over me now. You know how it is. I probably don't have any, but you get that itchy thing. So, you know, check for nails around the tires. And thank you so much, Lori Place, for making sure that, that they, you know, reminding us to make sure we're doing it. Um, you know, the thing is, and oh, hey, Sharifa. Thank you for being here, hun. Thank you so much. I hope you're feeling better. You go get you some rest and, you know, we'll see you. Be good. Uh, so check it out. And the way this parking lot is, there's one entrance into the lot, but they've got it kind of cordoned off. You have to go through a gate that lifts up and all that stuff. But there's an, an exit route that cuts across there away from it. And so there was a white Jeep Cherokee sitting in the in our path. So we couldn't go out and I didn't, where we were parked at, I didn't see the other cut across. And so we pull up the white Jeep Cherokee is just sitting there. So I put my hand out the window and I go like this, let them know, come on past me. We're going to be going out that way. I have my turn signal on and they came past and I turned out, well, I noticed they had taken the, the cutoff and they were waiting there. And next thing you know, when I pull out, they come right behind me. And I notice that they're every move that I'm making, they're they're copying it. And the thing is, is you know, it, it took me just a couple minutes, and I realized that this person's actually tailing me, and they're doing it very poorly. Their actions are literally, I you know, I, I at first Chad, at first Chad was like, "What? People are falling? No, no, no." And then he starts watching out of his mirror and suddenly he's like, we, we are being followed, you know, and to, I'd said it before. They were so, they were so bad at it that literally at one point I stopped and let them catch up to us before we took back off. Well, when we parked in the parking lot at Walmart, I got into the last, into the last couple of spots there at the very back of the parking lot. So when they came into that parking lot, they were going to have to come past us. I rolled my window down and I'm sitting out the window looking right at them. And as the vehicle goes by, I see the guy, he's looking around like this. And then he realizes I'm looking at him. It wasn't until just a few days ago when I was looking through uh, some of Aaron's old uh, content that he had. I'm like, that guy that was following us looks just like the guy who was parked outside of Aaron's house that Aaron confronted. I was like, holy smoke. And I, I texted Aaron. I texted Lori Plays you know, Aaron, because, you know, want to keep him updated on everything. And Lori plays because she's a retired deputy in Florida. And they're both like, what, what? And Lori's like, wait a minute, nobody follows me. And I'm like, yeah, but you got a nail through the side wall of your tire. So I think that uh, there wouldn't be a need to follow you if they're out there damaging your vehicle like that. But the, you know, those kinds of things I've come to expect. Those kinds of things don't even bother me anymore. Like I said, I was actually playing and having fun with the folks that were following us down in Clearwater, having fun with it. All right. What are they going to do? What are they really going to do to me? All right. I'm not as scared. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've spent my entire life 
uh, with dealing with the fact I'm a big guy and I'm a strong guy and I have capabilities. All right. You know, catch wrestling, Muay Thai, uh, MMA. So I'm not real worried about that. Um, you, you know, mischief, I think that, oh, sorry, wrong one. Um, yeah, with the money that they spend and I missed something. Let's see here. Mandy said something. Did I miss it? Uh, let's see. Um, Poe and chat. I have to go back to work. Uh, that's okay, hon. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. You know, I appreciate everything you do. May have to listen on the replay crew. You know, the thing is you were here and appreciate you. So don't you worry about it. If you can't be, you can't be here for the live, you know, and you're going to listen to it on replay. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I never even go back and look at any of my old content, to be honest with you. I can't stand looking at myself. So, but the, um, you know, I had, I had grown to the, I've grown to the point where I'm almost expecting it when I go places, when I have, have things going on, I expect someone to show up. I expect to be followed, all that stuff. It doesn't bother me. You're not going to scare me. You're not going to back me down. What I wasn't prepared for was when the initial stuff came out about Miriam and Mike Render, the number of people that are in this community and the number of people who are former Scientologists that you don't hear from that were coming to me and saying, hey, phone calls, they got, I got your number from this person. I got your number from that person, you know, and like I said, they want to start it off with, I really respect you. I love your content. And the thing is, is I don't, you know, you need to think about what you're doing. You're splitting this community up and all that. I'm not the one who's splitting it. I am literally reacting to what someone else is saying. All right. And it's not just me. Look at Marilyn Honig and the crap storm she went through. Mitch and the things that he was saying. Marilyn actually being asked on, I think it was two different emails where she was asked if she would be part of the Aftermath Foundation board. And she turned it down, but then they come out and they say, and someone who's on the board says, oh no, I talked to that person. This didn't happen. Okay. Marilyn came out and she brought the receipts for everything. And she, there's no denying it at that point. She has the emails. She has the messages. She has all that, you know? So why am I the bad person? Why is Marilyn the bad person? We're not the ones out here lying about people. We're not the ones out here trying to discredit other people, especially we're not trying to harm victims. All right. Why are we the bad people? Why are we the ones that are considered tearing the community apart instead of self-reflecting or looking in the mirror and realizing that your own actions are causing far more damage to this community? So now people like myself, people like Marilyn, uh, like, like Aaron Smith Levin, we're instead of having to focus completely on Scientology and what's going on with that, now we have people who were supposedly our friends and comrades that were helping us in this fight to take Scientology down that are now coming after us. And I'm sick and tired of hearing, oh, I love your content and all that, but you know, you really should think about what. No, how about you sit back and you think about what you're doing, what you're saying, and what damage you're doing? How about you sit back and the people that you're trying to defend and you're trying to deflect from and the damage that they're doing, not just to this community, but to the victims themselves? When you have someone like Miriam, who is just a, a fantastic person. She literally sent me messages. Hey, just want to give you a quick update. And I stay out of her business for the most part, but I'll send her messages as well. How you doing, hon? Everything okay? If you need anything, let me know. And we do back and forth like that. And I'm not going to bother her until after she comes out of her treatment and we see how she's feeling and where she's going from there. That's when I'll talk, you know, I'll start talking more to Miriam. Someone asked if I'm going to have her on. If Miriam wants to come on, she will come on my channel. She'll do an interview with me on a live stream and we're going to go over things, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to handle it with kid gloves. I'm going to handle it with respect, compassion, and empathy. All right. I'm not trying to get Miriam on here and make her cry. I'm not trying to get Miriam on here and make her angry. I want to be supportive of Miriam and that's how these other people need to be treating it. Stop acting like you are someone with power that you are in control and you can make people bend to your will. Why in the hell should someone who was a victim of what has happened have to get on their knees 
and beg you, please, please, please help me. You shouldn't have to be sitting in a position like that. You shouldn't want to be in a position like that. You should be wanting to help those people out. If someone comes to you and says, hey, I need your help, you shouldn't waste a second's breath. All right, here, let's get everything filled out. Let's get everything going, and we're going to get you the help that you need. If we can't do it, then we'll find the right people for you. But the fact is, do not sit there and act like you are still in Scientology and you are still a person who has some kind of power or control over other people. All right, it's time for all that crap to disappear. And I've said it before, it's been said by numerous other people within this community. There are far too many people that are holding positions that were higher ups in Scientology that were part of what caused the damages that these people need counseling, need psychiatric care for. Why are you sitting there making them come to you and ask you for help, beg you? That's absolutely ridiculous. It's absurd. All right. I understand some folks are somewhat of celebrity now in, in the Scientology community. I understand that. But the fact is, is if that, if you were part of the mechanism that hurt these people, if you were part of the higher ups of that mechanism of that machine that hurt these people, what the hell are you doing sitting here in a position where they have to come and beg you for help? There's no reason for that. Why in the world are you making people sign a waiver like that piece of crap waiver that you have? And I'll pull it up right here because, like I said, we're going to pull, we're going to bring receipts on stuff. I hereby forever and irrevocably, irrevocably waive, hold harmless, release, and discharge the Aftermath Foundation, its board members, volunteers, contractors, agents, employees and donors for any and all claims, liabilities, injuries, and damages, claims known or unknown that may arise from any and all verbal or written con contacts with representatives and or agents of the Aftermath Foundation, including but not limited to the receipt of benefits, advice, use of goods, services provided, or referral by the Aftermath Foundation. I understand that I am waiving all claims arising from any acts or any omit and or omissions, including but not limited to the negligence and or fault of the Aftermath Foundation, its agents and or representatives. What the hell? All right, literally, and I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be using, uh, uh, any kind of profanity, but I'm a bit upset with this. Uh, Ken's channel, let's all remember John A. Tech made a, I'm, I, I'm not going to say that word because that word is in, in, it's fine that you're putting it in there because you're pointing out what was made, made that comment at the end of the video. I think it was within the last four minutes of that video. Um, they laughed about it. That is one of the most insulting, harmful, hurtful things that you can say in this day and age, when you look back on the history of what has happened, especially in the Southern United States, that word still stings a lot of people. Okay. Why are you laughing about that? All right. We don't want to see harm come to Mike Render. That's not what we want. What we want to see is him to accept what he has done and how he was acting and take responsibility for it, not sit there and make fun of it. Oh, my, let's see. Uh, Green Hand Lady, watch the BP. What's the BP? Um, see, I get my head stuck on certain things and I can't. Uh, uh, and Colonel Soul, yep, the silence is more poisonous than the cure, which is the light of truth. Really just that simple. Can't stand having their feet held to the fire. Absolutely. Amen, brother or sister. Uh, Sandy Lee, uh, they are all just mad because Poe handed them a Hertz donut. <laughs> I don't know if I, I, that's the thing is I, I don't, I don't look at myself as someone who is in that position where I'm big enough that they would pay attention to me. That's what's been driving me nuts about this, that I've got these people. I understand Marilyn. So many people love and respect Marilyn. They love Duncan and they respect him. They are an incredible couple and they do so much. And there's a reason why they call her mama bear and say, don't burn my biscuits. All right. 
I, I, I get it. I understand why, uh, why they, why they, why they would come after Maryland and I get it, but you, um, Uh, I'm reading something here. Adam Barber. Hey, Adam. Uh, you can talk smack about me. I don't know. But you will get hurt. I promise. These people, the power of the word, of the world, were sheep. Deal with it. It's That sounds a lot like a lot of things that are happening. Um, and Sharon has become a new member. Poe is heated. I love the passion. Yeah, I bet my blood pressure is through the roof right now. The wife's going to kill me. Uh, let's see, Panda, um, Paula, Candelora. Oh, nice picture. Yet when he wanted a, a different kind of treatment and, mon and needed money, he got it without questions. Y you know, and that's the thing is, I've said it numerous times. Other people have said it. When he came out with the fact that he was being diagnosed with something to do with the big C word, how many of us jumped in right away? And I'm going to tell you how insulting it was. We held a huge chatathon, and for those of you, and I know most of you aren't like that. Most of you realize Chad does so much more behind the scenes than anyone even knows about. All right, and Chad's just not a big talker. That's why he does the parody stuff. So he can, he, you know, he's a very shy, very uh, close kind of person. So when he does the parody stuff, he's able to talk and he's able to let himself go with it. But Chad does a ton of stuff, and he, that's why we call them the Chadathons because they were originally his idea to do these things. I want no credit for doing for it. Um, Chad is, and there's that dang on hair again. Um, Chad does a lot of great things that people never hear about. That's why I am honored to have him as a friend and have him on my channel as often as I do. Unfortunately, now he's back to work. He's working so much we can't get him on, but we get him every Sunday night. That's good. But the you know the thing is is that when they found out the big C was involved with things, they said, Hey, Chad says, let's do a chat-a-thon so we can put some money together, make sure that he's, you know, he gets money for his treatment. We held a chat-a-thon and what amazed me was that chat-a-thon was 10 hours and they, he couldn't, you know, I asked, Hey, is he going to be able to, you know, at least, uh, jump on for a second? you know, just let people know how much he appreciates it, that kind of stuff. No, I don't think he's going to be able to. We couldn't even get a recorded video or even an email to show people. Hey, thank you for what you're doing for me. I really appreciate you all. Love you all so much. Thank you for doing it. We couldn't get that. And that was so insulting because when we found out there was something going on with him, we all jumped up immediately. We didn't, there was not even any questions asked. The only questions were, how do we do it? How are we going to put it together? Who's all going to be part of this? We all jumped right in there. All right. And so that, that happened and couldn't even get a thank you. Couldn't get anything. And I believe there was something put on his personal website where he thanked people at that point. But you have people that are giving up hours and hours, 10 hours of their life to sit there and hold a fundraiser so that you can be, you can get the treatment and you can't even give them 30 seconds of your time to either send an email, do a video or jump in for a little bit. That, that was so insulting, but I held, held my tongue on it, you know, and that, oh, I, I was so angry about that. Um, who the heck would Mick, uh, Mitch Brisker would Mitch Brisker went right, went right at, uh, Maryland. And you saw how things happened with that when she came out with the receipts on everything. Yeah. You don't do not tick off Maryland. Uh, I still have a bad taste in my mouth after the buddy, buddy interview questioning from ATAC of render the flippancy of Miriam and the pure hatred towards Aaron. I, <sighs> You know, and, and a lot of people say that there's a jealousy thing going on. And I truly feel that with the way I see how things are on, going. Aaron and Luis Garcia started the Aftermath Foundation. And when John Atak brought that up, it's like, well, and me, me and Leah, we were the, the reason why that foundation exists. Let me get you a soapbox. Go stand up there and everybody can come by. 
bow to you, kiss your feet, and tell you how great you are. All right. There's been tons of stuff that I've done on charitable causes. All right. Never once did I ask for any kind of notoriety for it because that's not how you do it. Well, Aaron was always out there pushing about the Aftermath Foundation. Yeah. Aaron was cheerleading for the Aftermath Foundation. How many times did I on my live stream stop and say, if you are in Scientology and you are trying to get out, contact the Aftermath Foundation. The link is in the description for this video. And then my mods would put it into the chat itself. All right. Does that make me someone that's trying to gain notoriety for the Aftermath Foundation? No. The reason why the Aftermath Foundation had so much money in its tills or its coffers was because of a lot of the stuff Aaron did promoting the Aftermath Foundation. Quit hating on a guy who did something good, okay? And, uh, you know, there are people that are like, well, Aaron's a narcissist and Aaron, Aaron, let me tell you something. If I texted Aaron right now, as soon as he has a chance, he's going to text me back, okay? Aaron is, Aaron's a great guy. Aaron is like, uh, he's, he's got so much daggone energy and he's got, I mean, I swear, it seems like the guy does nothing but drink energy drinks all day long. He's just going, 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 going. Okay. So if Aaron doesn't get back with you right away, that's because Aaron's busy. I understand that there are times when he will text me and I don't, I'm not able to get back to him till the next day. Okay. That's just, that's a fact of life, but some people well, I, I, I messaged Aaron and, and it took him a week to get back with me. Okay. Well, Aaron's got me. He's got all these other people that are texting him as well, you know, and normally when I'm texting Aaron, it's some kind of technical thing or something like that. And that's why, you know, so he's dealing with all those things. Look at all these channels that are out there. If anyone starts a new channel and they're trying to build their channel, Aaron says, send me, send me some, uh, some clips of it. I'll make sure I put it up on, on my lives and I get you some, we try to get people to your channel because Aaron believes like I do that the more channels we have in the SPTV family, the better it is, the stronger we are. And that's, I truly believe that. I think that there's more than, there's how many millions of people watch YouTube, okay? How many millions of people watched the Aftermath program? Okay, so there's tons of people out there. I've got, you know, 80 some hundred subscribers. Aaron's got almost 300,000 but there's still a ton more people out there that watch this content and we can share and share alike. It's not hurting anything. How many of you watch other channels? How many of you um, watch Lori, Lori plays? How many of you watch, um, you know, the different channels that are out there, Marilyn, all the different ones. And of course I'm going brain dead the minute I bring it up, but you know, that doesn't mean that you're not being faithful to the SPTV community or you're not being faithful to a channel. I love the fact that I, when I jump off of here, I'll go to another live stream and I'll jump into the chat and I'll type in my howdy, 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 which, you know, I've become, that's what I've become known for. Oh, and by the way, Steamboat Cheryl. Yes, he's here with me. I've got my cowboy Thetan. Cheryl, <laughs> that was the thing is, I was like the cowboy hat. And she's like, yeah, you're always saying howdy, howdy, howdy. I'm like, I've been to Texas, but I ain't from Texas, but all right, that's cool. I can live with that. Um, <clears throat> there's there's more than enough to go around. I'm not making any money off this, folks. I'll be 100% honest with you. This, is, this isn't for finance, okay? This is something that has a true, I have a true passion for and something that I, I think is worth being taken care of. Um, I'm trying to check right now. Uh, I got to say big thank you to, uh, one of the channel members here. Um, my Amazon wish list went up and they, they went on there and they got me the new, uh, they got me a, a new GoPro and they, they, everybody wants to be anonymous and I want to sit there and say, Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, um, but thank you. I really appreciate it. And you have, um, you know, when, when you do that, I, I really appreciate it. And if you'll notice everything that I, you know, all the money that comes in from this, any of the equipment that's gifted to me, those kinds of things, they all go towards putting better content out there. So thank you so much. Uh, tippy talk show. I have not been in Scientology. doesn't matter. You're here. You're helping to support the cause. So I don't understand the conflict 100%, but I wonder if the only reason it happened is because all 
uh, people involved are still so, so traumatized by Scientology. I, you know, it, it's a, it's a matter of the, the traumatization that I keep biting my tongue. Um, the traumatization that people are, are dealing with, but it's also the mentality and the mindset from Scientology that's going along with that. And that's the thing is, is that, we have to remember that there is, you know, they're coming out and they've, a lot of these people have spent a lifetime in Scientology and a lifetime of dealing with things in the Scientology way. So that's something that really it's, they got to get, uh, let's see. I made a bad joke. People now think I hate Chad. A absolutely. A bat goat does not hate Chad. Don't think that bat goat. It, a lot of us have st strange senses of humor being a former cop. Uh, Lori and I were talking about it last night. We have a really strange sense of humor as police officers. Batgoat works, and I believe Batgoat are you a uh, EMT or paramedic? I th but he works in the first responder world as well. We have a different kind of mindset. We have a different kind of sense of humor that we use. And you got to remember, a lot of times the 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 sense of humor that we have is actually a um, defensive thing that we use. You know, because you go to these scenes of horrific acts that have happened. And so it's that sense of humor that keeps us from losing our minds. So that that's what's going on with that. But no, Bat Goat does not hate Chad. Bat Goat is, he's been here pretty much. He's one of those, the first day one kind of people. We love Bat Goat. Bat, Do Bat Goat always has some great stuff. Like Joel McQueen. You know, you get Joel McQueen in here. Joel McQueen always has some fantastic um, ways that he, that he talks about stuff and he comes up with some, just some great stuff. We love Joel. Uh, let's see here. I'm just making sure. Oh man. And I see, it looks like, um, okay. So let me get on down through here. Gets through some of these comments here. William Peterson comment. I found Mike uh, renders argument. I would have to be crazy to try and remove the statute of limitations. Our Ar argument disingenuous. I'm going to be doing a live about that. I don't think they are lobbying, lobbying for felony of covering up SA rather. Uh, okay. Yeah. I I'm going to, I'm thinking about coming on Thursday night and I want to talk about the Lisa McPherson case and the statements that were made during that interview about, I couldn't have known what was going on because I was dealing with Lisa McPherson. I got a lot of problems with that. Um, Thetan Buster, Mike Render. Hey, don't touch my Thetan. Uh, Render said in his chat one day, if anyone was expecting to be acknowledged for their super chats, he didn't have time for all that. No, wow. You know, I don't care. I do care. If you are, if you're, you're going to spend your money for a super chat, I'm going to make sure it gets on here. But as you see, I try to make sure I get as many stuff as I, as many comments as I can in here and questions. Ooh, Sarah, that's a pretty little puppy. I think Mike struggles with being, being out exchange when receiving gifts, narcissistic people don't like feeling indebted to others. That's it. That's an, I've never heard that, but that's very interesting. Ooh, groovy Bobby. There's another uh, fur baby. Hello from Melbourne. Howdy. Uh, so happy. The new founder. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, folks don't go after, don't go after Matt goat. He, he really is a friend. He talks to Chad. We all do. Um, we just have a different kind of sense of humor there. So please, uh, you know, give him some leeway on that. Stooky six. Um, we're not all sheep. They think and assume we are, we are and wield influence wider perspective, current wave of people standing up, speaking out, especially where there's abuse, be united. Absolutely. That was, that was why that, you know, um, so as we, as we start going further and further into this, you know, I literally, when I did the thumbnail for this, that's how I felt like it was the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. That's how I felt. I felt like, and the only way that I could express that the best was do up a thumbnail where I was with a blindfold that said nothing to see, and then had some kind of gagging thing that said censored, because I felt like people were trying to come in and influence me 
Uh, was DOA in here? Hey, what's going on, DOA? I've been, I've been trying to keep up with your stuff. You keep putting it at different times. Uh, I didn't make the flyers, so amazing people have been making them for me. Just there for the swatting. Yeah, you're getting that a whole lot, and I can't wait till I get out to LA DOA and actually get to meet up with you. If you haven't had a chance, make sure you get over and check out DOA's channel. DOA, put your link in there and make sure that you, you know, so everybody gets over there and gets a chance. Hey, the great thing is, is that if you get over there and you check his lives, this guy gets swatted like once a week. So you're going to get a good chance of seeing him in handcuffs, which I know a lot of women would like to see that. Um, but, you know, this is, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. DOA, I would love to talk to you about how angry I am with the way that LAPD has been handling this whole situation. Uh, hey, chat, hope you're all doing good. Scientology is a cult. Absolutely. Uh, oh, my goodness. Look who made it in. I bet your ears were ringing, weren't they? Were burning, weren't they? Uh, Joel McCoy's here. I'm sorry I missed this. Sounds like a good one. We'll catch what I missed on rerun. And uh, Joel, another great friend of the channel here. Uh, another one of those that's been here pretty much from the beginning of this. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Tori was so excited to experience the swatting. Uh, you know that, oh my gosh, this, the, the stuff, this poor guy is having to deal with my goodness. Uh, let's see, uh, does it matter to you? Not to me question. What is the possibility that Mike render is on a gag order from Leah's attorneys? Do you understand? Um, if he was, he wouldn't be out there talking as much as he is. That's the thing. And I've got some ideas and Thursday, um, DOA, I'm putting my email in here. If you just send me a quick one, and that way we can start the ball rolling on that. Uh, just shoot me a quick email, and uh, we'll get in touch. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'd love talking to you. Uh, you know, especially with you know being a former, uh, being a retired chief of police, and then seeing how LA is handling it. And hopefully, you saw when I was discussing about when Aaron got arrested about uh, Tallman, the way he handled things. Oh. Uh, ham sandwich. Hey, Apo, I support SBTV 100%. Please don't trust any. What? Oh, the angry. Okay. Uh, I was like, wait a minute. What? Um, you know, I, and that's a sad thing is I have to be some, oh, and folks, Miss Sunrise Dawn is in here. She put the link for DOA's channel, but Miss Sunrise Dawn is one of my three mods for the channel and, uh, love my mods do, do a fantastic job. Um, you know, uh, that's, that's the sad thing is, is I'm getting to the point where I'm having to closely check out who I have associations with. I've gotten like in the past week, I've probably gotten over 150 friend requests on Facebook. So I'm going in, I'm checking out each profile and I'm seeing a lot of people that either just created their Facebook account and have no posts or haven't post, or they've had a Facebook account for two years and have two posts in the whole thing, have one picture. That's their profile picture, those kinds of things. They're not engaging in anything. So I'm, I'm very, very leery. Don't you worry about that, hun. Um, this wasn't one of my normal scheduled ones. Normally I do Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but this week there's just been too much going on. Uh, let's see. Oh, Tori was supposed to leave. She drove up right in front of where they had you cupped. Oh man. Uh, but Hey, I bet your wrists are developing beautiful calluses nowadays. This Massey comment at what point in time will Mike render step back and realize that he is not, he is now irrelevant in helping anyone. We can't just keep giving him a pass with a small amount of good. If he keeps talking ish. Um, I don't know if he, if it ever will come to that. If it will, uh, LPB, to be honest, John A. Tech is, is British and that L word doesn't have the same connotations here in the UK, but that doesn't change the fact that we could all see a terrible PR interview. Yeah. And, you know, and that, um, you know, I, we watch a crap ton of British programming. So we, we get a, um, we know a lot of the, uh, the, the British lingo the verbiage and all that but not everybody does and so there's going to be different things that johnny atac's going to say just simply because of where he's from and where he grew up just like with me being a hillbilly had i not come up here to michigan with my wife and started a career in law enforcement here 
that I would still be using a lot of the verbiage, a lot of the nomenclature that I used when I was living, at, you know, the hillbilly lifestyle in Appalachia. So there's a lot of things that we have to, you know, we have to take into account. Uh, DOA is becoming professional at being swatted. Yeah, I know. But he sure would prefer not to be a pro. Absolutely. I can, I can tell you that. I, isn't that right, DOA? Be nice not to get uh, not to get swatted every other week. Uh, doesn't matter to me. Not doesn't matter to you. Not to me. That's not fair. I don't use Facebook. It's probably been five years since my last post. The problem is, is I learned when I was a detective and then I learned when I went through the FBI training on identity theft, those kinds of things. Those are, those are things that you watch out for. Those are red flags. Um, uh, you know, profiles that instantly pop up out of nowhere or they're basically have been dormant. They've not done anything. So those are things that I I watch out for because my Facebook profile is set to private because of all the things that have been going on. So I have to be very careful how I filter it. Now, if you're someone that's in the, in the chat and all that, and you're sending me a face request, a uh, Facebook request, you know, let me know, Hey, I'm, I sent you a Facebook request, but you didn't, you didn't respond to it. All right. Well, uh, let's take a look. Uh, they lit a fire under Miriam that won't go out anytime soon. Absolutely. And let me tell you something. Miriam is a strong person. Yeah, she's been through a lot of crap and she needs that uh, DSR treatment. But she, believe me, that is somebody I, I think is, is awesome. I love talking to Miriam. And like I said, one of the things that made me the happiest in talking to Miriam was to hear her laugh while we were talking. That just, that my heart just went... So Joel McCoyne comment with all the negative energy, uh, let's see, uh, M Mike render and others with him have brought to the community. It is wonderful how much positive energy there is now in the SPTV foundation. Uh, now that it's running, I revel in the joy. Absolutely. And were you able to, um, I believe it was you, Joel, that was said you wanted to make a donation and you wanted to make sure that they knew, did you see on their page, how you can actually click on the boxes that say, yes, I want people to know that I donate it. I want people to know how much I donate it. I think that's absolutely awesome. Uh, Nasty Nathaniel, Poe on the go. You, me, and DOA should go protest together and then drink margaritas afterwards. What do you think? Now, you know I don't drink. So, but I will be more than happy to sit there and have a, uh, have a, have a soda. Uh, you know, unless you know somebody that can pour a proper pint of Guinness, that's one of the only things I, I, that I will partake with, with alcohol. Uh, let's see. My sunrise Don been sick a couple days. How's the kitty doing? Let me know. Um, I'm scared and crapless when I hear helicopters. I bet, you know, it's almost that, uh, that, uh, you know, I feel, I love the smell of napalm in the morning, that kind of stuff. Thank you, DOA. I'll be getting in touch with you as soon as I can. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Bouquet. Uh, what do you mean? Green, uh, green eyed lady. Uh, I'm probably, I probably know what, oh, oh, you're talking about, um, uh, keeping up appearances. Uh, she kind of highest some kind of, uh, her husband, I think is hilarious. Uh, let's see DOA. I bet I get scared for you when I hear them. Yeah. I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I've talked about that before about the simple fact that the high school in the city of River Rouge, where I first retired from, they had, they were getting the boom, boom threats at the school and the kids were doing it because they knew that they would get out of school for the day or things like that. What they didn't take into account was the fact that once things were cleared, they were going to have to be staying over after school or they're going to have to start eating into their summer because of all the days they missed because of it. But the, it got to the point where we were getting so many that we weren't sending in everybody and their cousin to go in and search the school. And we started training the school employees on how to be able to take care of that. You would think the same kind of things would be going on with LAPD. You send in one or two cars, you check the scene. All right. When they say you're sitting there in your van with a bang, bang pointed at the building and they pull up and they see you've got your tripod set up with a camera filming you across the street and kitty corner from where your van is you'd think that they would have enough intelligence to go. They're calling in another fake one. They're swatting him again. And for me, um, I, I, I just think that it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. The amount of taxpayers money that they are wasting on this. And quite honestly, if they would do the job, right. 
and do something about finding out where the calls are coming from, who's making the calls, and then start charging those people. You know, hopefully you get one of those. It's one of those people who are an org member or their staffers or something like that. Suddenly they realize they're facing time in jail. And they're like, wait a minute. I got the order from higher up the food chain here. Scientology ordered me to do that. They told us to do whatever it takes to get these people to stop. Hopefully those kinds of things happen. And then suddenly they're like, you know, and they're facing real retribution for it. Uh, Valerie Bojack, thank you for that $5 super. Uh, never end 100% da- disabled combat vet. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your service. Love the profile pic supporting SBTV in my only way I can help, but I can do this. And I've said this before, the comment about there are those who do, and there are those who comment is BS simple. It's BS you being here, engaging in the chats, being part of this, you are doing. And like I asked, like when Chad was on here and I asked, okay, I'm someone who comments. That's what I do when I'm on these live streams. But I'm also someone who went out there boots on the ground in Clearwater, Florida with Chad and with Lori Place, with Dustin Fountain Avenue, with uh, Steamboat Cheryl, with Aaron Smith Levin, with Sarasota Jerry. You know, there were pro- I th- there were over 10 of us and we were out there boots on the ground. So I'm someone that's chatting by commenting by your co- by your statement and I'm someone who's doing. So how do I fall into that? Because the way you said it, it sure sounded like there's either commenting or there's doing. All right? It's time to come into the 21st cent, the 22nd cent, or whatever we are at. But it's time to come into the current year that we're in. Realize that you're no longer in Scientology. Things are not black and white. There is a whole spectrum of colors out there that are in play with this. And you know what? You need to accept the fact that without this community, without your viewers, the commenters, then you wouldn't have a channel. You wouldn't have a presence out here, okay? Each and every one of you coming into this chat, you are supporting the fight against this organization. How many of you have sent letters to your uh, members of Congress, sent letters to your senators, sent letters to your state politicians? How many of you sent emails and letters to the FBI? How many of you have just simply stood up and said, enough of this crap? Okay. And that's the thing. You are doing something. And that's the thing. Uh, let's see here. Judy, you got this. Is Poe on the go using common sense and logic? Silly Poe. Uh, is that like the silly rabbit thing? Uh, I, uh, I'm i sorry, but you know, I get caught on a comment and I'm just like, so sometimes I don't read. Jess checks out. I'm heading to bed. Thank you so much for being here, Jess. We really appreciate you. Thank you for all. Thank you all for the conversation. That's what I love. You guys are having conversations in the chat separate from what I'm even saying. And that's the thing I love is I love seeing everyone, um, you know, be here, be part of this, be connected. You are doing something. Don't let someone who is living by standards by that were written by the person who wrote the most science fiction, the most fictional stories in the history of the world. If I remember correctly, L. Ron Hobart still holds the Guinness record for the most fictional stories ever published. Okay. It's time to get off of that track. Everybody who's here is doing. Everybody who's here is caring. Everyone who is here wants to see the end of Scientology. Uh, Joel McCoyne, chief was asked to give a talk for a rescue group for reptiles. They need a little help raising money. I told them about you. They said the guy from, (laughs) oh yeah, uh, Joel, uh, give them my email. Tell them, get in touch with me. I would love to do something to help them out. Heck, we'll even do some kind of fundraiser right here on the channel. If that's what help them helps them folks, if you have an idea for a fundraiser or something like that, and it's something that we actually pick up and do a fundraiser for, I don't want to touch any of the money. I will help. I will help organize it. I will help get the people on here to do the actual um, video, the, the live stream to help raise the money. 
but I want when people give to give directly to the pay re resources for that organization. I don't want to touch any of it. I want it all to go to directly to them. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sandra McLean swatting with the fire department on Jess and Serge at the town hall last night. Yeah, I heard about that. And how many times have the fire department had to come out because they're, they, they, you know, they got calls for fires and stuff like that. It just really, um, the, it, it, so much money being wasted, so many resources, how many houses, how many house fires or how many building fires were going on elsewhere in LA when they had to send the fire trucks over there? How many other crimes were being committed in LA? Did someone actually end up losing their life because the officers weren't there They because they had to be called out to go and SWAT DOA? All right. Are people literally thinking about this? Because when you do that and you pull all those resources in on swatting a young man who is doing nothing more than First Amendment auditing and peaceful protesting. When you pull all those resources, everywhere else in that district loses those resources. People's lives could be at jeopardy. Why? Because you don't like the fact that someone doesn't like your organization and you feel that it's okay to do whatever is needed to take them out. How about the fact of, I was talking about it when I, the second night that we were there with Lori plays and Farrell Cheryl, and we were doing the first amendment auditing around flag and Fort Harrison. And one of the things that really caught my eye was the fact that on the first night, we didn't see any of it, but the second night there were a lot of people walking around who appeared to be displaced, not having a home. They're walking around very dirty, very disheveled, and they're talking to themselves. All I kept getting were flashbacks of what happened to Aaron, what's happening to uh, Confident Chris, what's happening to all those uh, protesters and First Amendment auditors out in LA. I just started getting flashbacks. Like I said, situational awareness is very big with me. So I noticed these things that are going on. And for the most part, Lori Plays and I because we're former cops, we walk with a purpose. So we're, you know, Chad and Cheryl were behind us, but we had to come together and we had to meet up because I didn't want them standing out there, you know, taking a chance that one of these people could come and attack them. It was a very real possibility in my eyes. And I wanted to make sure that we did not have a situation like that go down. You know, I, I've said it how many times on here? You're going to do these things. Please don't do it by yourself. And always make sure that the people that you're with are also paying attention to what's going on around them. So uh, Rat City Princess, that's pretty cool. I like it. I love that you called out the comment, you do or you comment. What a jerk. Absolutely. That's, you know, like I said, I don't think any of you are commenters. I think you're all doing. Uh Sandra, I can't, I, I can't figure it out for the life of me. I really can't. Why isn't Clearwater being investigated? Why isn't LAPD being investigated? Why isn't Denver Police Department being investigated? These are, and they shouldn't be investigating themselves. I've said it a hundred times on here. We, these departments, when they have things like this going on, should not be allowed to investigate themselves. It should be a higher authority, either the state authority, or it should be the federal authority that should be investigating them. Hey, Portland, what's going on? It's all right that you're late. You're here. Uh, Pup, you do such a good job for this community. There's so many people who never get the recognition that they that they need. And if you think there's someone out there who deserves to be um, deserves to be called out and being given credit for what they've done, absolutely let me know. And I'll put them out here and I'll put them on blast and let everybody know what a good person they are. If I'm going to call people out for doing bad stuff, I'm more than happy to do it about the good stuff. Uh, Tans, you'll soon become a target for Mike Render, like Aaron and Mike Brown, when he finally realizes he can't control you anymore. What's he going to do to me? Hmm. I already got people calling for him. Yeah, leave him alone. Absolutely. Bat goat, you said it perfectly. Chat is a living, breathing entity. You folks in here, this you're literally building a, a living, breathing thing that is constantly evolving and constantly 
changing and you're being you, you're doing i uh, post a kitty update but the chat is going pretty yeah i, I agree um email me and let me know that'd be the easier way uh serenity comment thank you poe for being you well thank you and thank you for that pup pick uh claudia m i haven't done a thing but watch sptv but viewing increases the algorithm absolutely there you know i've had people that have emailed me or messaged me and said hey i wish i could do a super but i just don't have the money click that like button subscribe to the channel go to the other channels click the like button after the live streams are over go into the comments into the comment section and leave a comment whether it's just hi just catch it on the replay do those kinds of things that is support in and of itself and the thing is is that you don't have to be up here on screen doing this there's a lot of people that are very uncomfortable with it that would rather you know watch but you're engaging in this and your support just by being here is what drives this and what keeps it going uh desperately saboteur most published works by one author excellent thank you i knew it was something like that you know who how i found out about that joe rogan listen to joe rogan podcast when he was talking about lrh uh tennessee jenny oh look at that um lrh was a pro prolific but horrible writer yeah i i battlefield earth how many times i gotta say it my goodness i tried reading his science his sci-fi when in high school asimov and heinlein were better you know there was a lot of them um uh, I love the the um, Magician's Apprentice. I think that was by uh, oh I can't remember what his name is. The um, it was part of the Rift War Saga series. There was the Dragon Riders of Pern. Those things. I'm a huge fan of Harry Potter. I took my kids to all the Harry Potter uh, premieres. The we went to the midnight showings so we could see them. We went to all the book releases. Those kinds of things. Love science fiction. I, I absolutely love it um you know but lrh no uh let's see here i'm just trying to get down through this a little bit better here there we go uh it costs a uh, graduated thought thank you oh that's a pretty picture it costs taxpayers like fifty thousand time fifty thousand dollars each uh, every time a single fire truck goes out on one of those calls not to mention the staffing costs absolutely you're not just talking about the cost of the fuel. You're talking about the salaries. You're talking about the benefits that have to be paid, the workman's comp. And whether workman's comp is being used or not, you still got to pay into that. All those things go into it. And there's and then you have all the time that has to go into doing the reports on it, doing everything that has to go into that. Um, and that's the that's that's the the crazy stuff about it is, is this costs so much taxpayers money and all these cities are saying we're broke. We don't have money for this, but yet you're sending out 50 officers, two helicopters, fire trucks, and all that stuff. When you know full well, DOA is sitting across the street from his van. He's not inside his van doing anything. What the one time they called city had a chainsaw. Who in the, who in the world is in downtown LA walking around with a chainsaw? Honestly, doesn't it kills me paula why the helicopters total waste of resources helicopters are actually a very important part in these larger cities because oftentimes the helicopter can get there to the scene and they can actually get a viewpoint of what's going on but the fact is is that them sending one or two helicopters every time they do this to doa absolute waste and it costs a lot of money to keep them hell I, I actually pulled it up what does it cost uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I don't have a lot to give, but my time do great job work too. Absolutely. You don't have to do the super chats. I've told people there for a long time. I told people don't do super chats because one of the things that was also being done to try to handle me was immediately after my videos had gone live, someone would go in and send in a complaint to YouTube and then they would strike my videos and they would go for demonetization of it. Well, now I've found a way around that and I've, I've been able to get to uh, get clear of it. But for a long time, I did not want people giving super chats because it. I honestly, I, we had someone who gave over $100 in one live stream in super chats. When they demonetized that video, YouTube kept that money and it never came to me. And I told that person, you need to go either through your credit card company or through YouTube, demand your money back. So, you know, that's that's how I feel about those things. That's why I got the Amazon wish list. That's why I have the buy me a coffee 
those kinds of things. And those to me are, you know, I, I would rather you do that because you know, it's coming directly to me or it's the product is coming to me. And that I think that's better than letting YouTube suck 30% of anything that's given. So, uh, Joel McCoy, I have been worried about all the violence that is happening to some of the protesters. They are well-informed, but having Poe and Lori and their experience is valuable. Safety is paramount. And that's one of the things I want to do is if I can get DOA to come on for a live stream, I would really like to talk to him about safety precautions, those kinds of things. I know he does a lot of this by himself and it scares me to death. Every time I see him out there by himself, the, uh, the Denver Scientology audits, I, it scares me to death. See him out there by himself, you know, those kinds of things. He may have someone with him, but all I ever see is him. And that scares me. You're out there and you put yourself into a position where you could, and you saw what happened where the Sea Org member came up, snatched his phone. He actually had to tackle the guy, put him on the ground. I'm going to be talking about that in another live that's going to be coming up. Rat City Princess, I'm waiting to protest in LA, but afraid to go over there alone. Absolutely, do not go by yourself. Um, but, you know, try to get in touch with um, with DOA, with Streets, some of those folks that are, that are out there doing it, and see about going out with them. But don't go by yourself. Uh, please don't. All right, I'm, I'm no one to tell you what to do or not to do. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to, as someone who is trying to look out for everyone that's doing it, please, 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 you know, go with someone else, go with someone that you can trust and you guys watch your backs. Uh, let's see, is there a website I can look at for time and place safety and numbers for a 50 year old female with the big C? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Try to get hold of DOA, try to get hold of some of those other protesters that are out there. If you can't, um, Aaron has a more direct line to it than I do, and you might want to get hold of Aaron, but shoot me an email and I'll see if I can get hold of some of those folks. I'm sure that they would love to have someone else join them in, in the fight. Uh, oh, TKK, if you want to help the aftermath, be prepared to kneel down and kiss the ring. There, excellent, excellent example of that. It feels like it is you're going in front of a mafia don got to kiss the ring uh let's see get on down here let's see yeah and that you know this too shall pass um oh two purties um they are individual just watch the stream see who is where and that's another thing but coordinate that's that's a big thing that you know like i want to talk with doa about is the coordination with the other streamers and things like that making sure, you know, you don't have to have a group of 20 doing it. Like I said, the last night that we were out in Clearwater, it was Lori Plays, Farrell Cheryl, or Steamboat Cheryl. It was Chad, and it was me, all right? But there were four people. And if not, if uh, Farrell or Lori weren't there, then Chad and I would be doing it, and we would both be keeping. And, um, oh, thank you, uh, uh, Miss Sunrise Don, for putting the uh, – put my email out there for folks. Uh, but the, you know, the thing is, is that just make sure that you have someone with you that you both are either live streaming or recording or recording directly to the cloud so that if, even if they do steal your equipment, they can't get your content. Uh, uh, there we go. Love Maddie, but you do not need to give any money to any YouTuber liking, subscribing, commenting helps them so much too. Yeah. I just uh, see here. Well, that's that's a little bit different, Michael, in the swatting. I'm talking about where they were being attacked. Uh, the swatting, there's nothing you can do. It You could have 100 people out there, and you all are going to be end up on the ground, probably with having zip ties hold, uh, cuffing you behind your back. So, all right, folks. So, um, like I was saying, I'm just getting really upset about the fact that I've got so many people that are trying to silence me. They're trying to tell me, that I don't need to, that I need to stop talking about an individual or an organization that I'm harming the SPTV community by doing it. And I say, no, they are the ones who are harming the community. Because one of the things you hear so many times is, you know what? You have to be the bigger person. You can come get on bended knee, kiss the ring, and tell us how great we are, and then we can get along. If you don't do that, you're hurting the community. That's the kind of feeling that I get from this. Uh, 
<laughs> All right, back go. You're gonna you're gonna get so many people mad at you. Um, but the the thing is, is if you're harming the community, realize it. Take a step back. Take a breath. Then start moving forward. Find ways to close that open wound that you are creating. It's not hard. Okay. If someone calls me out and says, Hey, you were wrong about this. I may question. Oh, how do you know? They bring receipts. Okay. I'm wrong. I will admit it. I am not perfect by any means whatsoever. And I'm willing to accept that I am flawed, that I can make mistakes. Why are other people acting as though they don't? And why are you acting like calling them out on the things that they do is harming the community? No, that organization was supposed to be about helping those who left Scientology and need help. It's that organization was not supposed to be focused on fighting Scientology. That organization is supposed to be there for folks like Miriam, for the other people who have blown and they need help. That's what it's supposed to be about. We as SPTV are the ones who are supposed to be taking the fight to Scientology. Okay? Deal with those who are coming out on the foundation side of it. On your personal side of it with your channel, go after Scientology. It's that simple. You don't need to co-mingle them. Because the minute that you start taking your focus off of off of the people who need the help and start putting it on Scientology is the minute those people start suffering. Whether you want to accept it or not, the fact is, is that when you sit there and you take money, and I'd like to know how much that billboard cost in LA, you take money to put a billboard up like that, okay? And it's for the sole purpose of, yes, I know it said if you want to leave Scientology and all that. But there was a lot of comments made that that was done as a direct attack on Scientology. I agree it was. But the fact is, is that you need to focus on the survivors, getting them the help, getting them the resources that they need, taking care of them. Okay? Stop worrying about me. Stop worrying about any of the noise in the background. Take care of the victims. Do what you said you were going to do and what this foundation was based on. That's why I am so happy to see the SPTV Foundation finally up and running with Aaron uh, at the helm of it. They're going to keep their eyes focused on doing the right thing. They have a great board that's there, and you may not like some of them that are on the board. You may love them all. You have that personal right. But the fact is, is that we need to keep our eyes on the prize. Okay. The foundations help the folks that are leaving that need the help. SPTV fight Scientology. Every one of you in the chat that is commenting, that is hitting the like button, is being engaged in the comments. And even if you're just watching at home, okay. If you're just watching and you're not even commenting or chatting, you're still helping with the fight. And it's important that we keep that focus and we take the fight to them. And we need more and more people standing up and saying, you will not silence me. You will not scare me. You will not back me down. And that's what I'm saying here and now. You're not going to gag me. You're not going to blindfold me. You're not going to restrain my hands behind my back and stop me. I will not be treated like someone who is beneath you. And I will not let you treat the people that are trying to bring the fight in the same way. You're not going to do that. And if you don't like it, too bad. Because that's how it is. I've spent my life, the majority of my life has been spent fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. You think I'm going to stop now? You're out of your mind. And if you think you're going to be able to influence me or scare me off, you are out of your mind. Scientology isn't scaring me. 
They aren't backing me down, and I'll be damned if I'm going to have a group of people who are no longer in Scientology or support someone who keeps making comments that insult, hurt, defame, treat other people so horribly. If you think that you're going to be able to make me back down, you're out of your mind. All right? People like Rabbit. Rabbit never deserved the attacks that she got. Rabbit was literally responding to things that were being said. Rabbit was asked to be help, was asked to help by Miriam. Okay, those are important parts, but we're not backing down. We're not going anywhere. And if you don't like it, too bad. But if you want to help with the fight, just step up and say, okay, we're putting all that crap behind us now. Let's move forward with what we're supposed to be doing. Let's get this done and do it the right way. But don't talk to Clearwater Chad because he'll bring Frank Onomadeo in it. All right, folks, as always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Every second you spend here with me is time that you'll never get back. So hopefully we've been able to open your mind, open your viewpoint, in some cases, educate you. I'm not the smartest person in the world. Believe me, I, there's a lot of education I get. But the fact is, is I love spending this time with you and I love trying to be a positive influence on things. So as always, folks, life is short. You get one shot. Make it count.